Welcome to a deep dive. I'm going to go into professor mode because I can't stop thinking about this book. And there are a few reasons I can't stop thinking about this book today. So I want to go over it and I want to, my, my argument is that this is an example of comic art and storytelling at its best. These are the points I'm going to make. First off, uh, we're learning through the artistry of Gleg, Greg, <laughs> worked so hard on his last name I forgot his first name, Greg LaRoque, 1984. It is Marvel Team Up number 143. This is an object lesson in how to put together your comic storytelling. And it draws from a lot of traditions that I see within this that I'll talk about maybe toward the end. Uh, well, I can just mention them now. This is um, it's a Marvel book, so we have the Marvel way of writing, and it's in 1984. So we have uh, we have influences from Will Eisner and Neil Adams. I see throughout this, but this is an example of what makes Greg LaRoque a great comic artist, as opposed to say a pinup artist who happens to draw comics. And it all has to do with the storytelling in the book itself, the paneling specifically. And here's something I didn't catch in this cover, which also, this can be found within the Monica Rambo collection of stories. But I'm going to go back to the original comic because we, when we deal with paneling, uh, there's an issue with this panel needs to be on the right side because that's what it was designed to do in the in the book, regardless of the ads. So I'm going to stick with the original with the original here and just give a shout out to where you can go to find this. I'm sure it's the whole issue is online too. We're reading comics in a different way nowadays as well. I do realize that but this is the classic single issue format that I got at the grocery store. So this is not a stream of consciousness uh, mumbling stuff today. I got a plan. Here's my plan of action. Um, how to create a comic and what it means. Uh, there is always a push and pull between the writer and the artist. And yeah, it's a comic book, so it's comic art. It's the artist, right, telling the story. Well, yeah, the artist is telling most of the story, and the, uh, the writer and the text itself doesn't want to get in the way of that storytelling. So let's open it up. The, what I love about this, and I kept thinking about it all day, is... If I'm my eight-year-old self, that I am in 1984, I'm picking this up at the grocery store, I'm not reading any text at all. None of this matters to me. I, I, I'm just, my head's not there. But I can go through this entire book and know exactly what's happening. So let's look at the plot. From this first opening splash, opening, I, I know there's a term for the opening page. It's not coming to me now. But we know that something's wrong. Captain Marvel is in pain. Do we need to know why? Sure, we can read later on if we need to know why. From a 12-year-old's point of view, I know there's something wrong with Captain Marvel. Okay, we're talking about what's wrong with Captain Marvel. Spidey looks concerned. So we got a we. I, I missed the I missed the thought balloons. Uh, Spidey's concerned. We can see the concern here. How do you draw Spider-Man? Again, there's an art in that because there's. How do you ex give expression to? what there's nothing to express. We've got to focus on body language, we've got to focus on the eyes, we, you've got to focus on what the arms do. The same problem they have in the movies. But this is not a movie. This is sequential art. It's not storyboarding. It's not pinups. It's sequential storytelling. This leads to this. Da, 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 da. Something's happening here. This is why this, this page needs to be on the right side, because it assumes we flip it over, and we find the introduction to Star Fox right here. Gives me just enough text to know that this is Star Fox. Okay, uh, so hey, uh, this is flashback. This is what happened in the last issue. How do we know that? Well, we, we see that it's not uh, not colored as well as it should be. So great, that's a recap. That's the exposition that we always get in in comic books. And this is, if I'm an eight year old, this is how I'm learning to read. This is how I'm learning to make sense of what's happening here, and then the words come later. Call it literacy. Um, Star Fox is mad at something. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? So I'm reading it from, again, I'm a 12 year old, or not, I keep saying 12. I'm an eight year old. And here it goes. Okay, so we know we need to go somewhere. We, who, who knows where we go? I'm not concerned about that. I wasn't concerned about it this morning, but we're here. 
and we're fighting bad guys and and the this doom doom and I love the designs the geometry here of the paneling as we get this is more traditional paneling here that we would expect all the story up to the adventure point focuses on on just traditional panels squares boxes so on and so forth but now that we're going to adventure land here we now get to play with the format so when you arrive someplace, there's a scuffle. You need the action. Here's the action. Action's right here. And we're still going upward. Now the ads are always in the way, but the ads are often assumed. So this is what this is what we lose when we when we do the reprints. But okay, so uh, big splash to introduce uh, whoever these these folks are. Let's just say, well, we we see that they're all women. So they um, even without reading, and I haven't read this, um, we realize that they're. They're, they're the good guys. This is who I am. Oh, I'm Star Fox. Look at me. Da, 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 da. And here we go. This We can understand the story front to back. We know exactly what's going on here. And the text itself just brings dialogue to what we see. This, again, is the, the artistry in sequential art. Uh, Again, it, we're going, do, 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 oh, there's a big thing here. This is what we do. He must be after it. Wow, really? What's going on here? And I love this. I love I love this this panel because you have the two-page splash. And this is what I was thinking about most of the day. You see how it aligns. It goes it goes upward here. So we can, and, and we're also, we're, we're in the center. We're in the center of the book. Going down, going up, 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 up. Not a lot of action going on here except <laughs> Spidey's hitching a ride. Spidey's landing. Great. That's what we're doing. And we know and then now we, we've got some bad guys. All right, and you know, here we go. So we can we can draw for par for parallelism. If we go back to the opening scene where this group is introduced and compare it with the, the scene where the bad the, the paneling's somewhat similar. We we have the, the big splash panelings. And again, from an eight-year-old's point of view, we can see what's going on. We don't have to read. This is why comics become important. Uh, the paneling and the action. Da da da. What's going on? Crash. And this is what I love here. Um, and you, you miss it the first time around because it becomes part of the action. The action is the panel. Um, so here's the these uh, shooting stars, and they're coming right at it, and they're they're almost going off the page. And at this point, it's serving as, as a, 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 this individual could land on this as if it's, it's part of this action, but we know it's down here. Beautiful. I mean, this is how you put together a comic. We see these themes carried over. We have the danger here. And this regardless of what I talked about Iron Fist. This is my favorite. I mean, I mean, look at this. You're you're incorporating the setting within the page. This is this is this is Will Eisner stuff here. This this is what makes the, the comic book what it is. So we have this entire rock face. We have uh, the bad guy falling down, but we need to use the space. We're utilizing the space. So we know it's here. This is the action. And then within we know that the eyes can go here, here, and here. Read Will Eisner's uh a book on sequential art, obviously. Um, uh, Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics. These are the particular lessons I'm just drawing from this, just to appreciate what we have here. And again, there's the action scene here. We know what's going on. We don't even need. To, again, we don't need to read it. Star Fox is uh, getting a little friendly here, and but we got to go. We got to go back to our own dimension and get out of here. And then we're we're doing it, and we're out of here. And there we are. And that's the end of the story. I didn't read a single word of this besides the name Star Fox that came my way. So we see the, 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 um, the relationship between plot and action and the role that the, that the word balloons do play. If needed, obviously we need those to enhance the story, but we understand the balance here. I think it's the artistry that brings the audience in to see what's going on, especially if you're an eight-year-old audience. And later on, we begin to see the importance of the text and how it propels the action. This is a nice self-contained story. Something's wrong, we got to go visit somewhere, find out what we need to find, and then great, everything's better now. So 
there we are. So that is a literary form that any eight-year-old can pick up all their own. And we see it in nice, nice biffier colors nowadays in this collection. Here it is, but the, you know, the, the paneling gets kind of mixed up. So this is always bothers me, and I, I know it shouldn't, because chances are most folks are reading, um, and they're just scrolling um, using a tablet or, or their phone. But I get it, but this is still a panel that one can appreciate, even if you zoom in on the rest. But if you, uh, you can always zoom back. But um, if you want the extra colors to that, that's how we do. Uh, so the... Um, that's my outline. I'm probably going too too far on this, but I just wanted to do a deeper dive on why comics matter, why this is important, how you can understand their role in the development of literacy from a perspective that I got to see of myself as the eight-year-old reader I initially was, not looking or, under, or, or thinking about this book ever since, having it sit, but then experiencing the narrative through this. I knew this was Captain Marvel. Never knew her name. Wonder what happened to her. But I could I could see what was happening. This is my and I wasn't even a big Marvel reader. Um, but this, Greg LaRoque, an essential important artist in understanding the the the, the artistry of the sequential narrative. Here it is. This is the Marvel way of doing things. This is in the tradition of that. Uh, this is the influence from Neil Adams later on, and this is what uh, this is what good comic writing should be. And a lot of it still is, and some of it may not be as much. But we don't want the text to get in the way of what we see, because the eye's doing two things at the same time here. Uh, and uh, similar ways we can we can view film um, and, and construct a narrative. So this type, and I went longer than I wanted to. I'm going longer than what I did this morning. Um, this is what helped me develop as someone who can read and follow and it led me to get uh, uh, led me to where I am as a uh, 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 blah 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 okay uh, that that's my uh, that that's my two cents on why comics are important um, my first draft presentation can't be any better than that I got to get out of this headspace I'm gonna end it now what do my notes say I think I've I think I've gone over it oh you can explore these themes on your own, but you know when you read a comic, this is this is what you should be experiencing when you read it. Well done, Greg Greg Laroque. I still screwed it up. Hey, have a good day.